Remember how mighty the CD-ROM drive used to be? Thoroughly stomping out all other media storage options of the day, continuing to grow in popularity and storage size. I always tried to be the first to deck out my massive gaming rig with the newest CD, DVD, or Blu-ray readers and writers. But now even this medium is sadly gasping to retain relevance, at least in the PC world. But if you're a tech junkie like I am, you probably have a bunch of these computing classics laying around. So what can you do with them? Maybe we could transform them into something cooler. Let's sketch. CD DVD drives have a lot of really useful parts in them. If you take them apart, you have a laser diode that reads the discs, a DC motor that opens and closes the drive tray, a brushless motor that spins the CD, and a stepper motor that moves the laser back and forth. Focusing on this, since it has a nice metal track and smooth back and forth movement, we could use it to make a CNC machine. But did, did I lose you? Okay, let's back this train up a bit. CNC stands for Computerized Numerical Control, and it's a method that allows computers to automate machines. It's often used with machines that move along different axes, like an X and Y axis, and almost like coordinates, the computer will tell it exactly where to go. And if you add a Z axis, you can also control the depth of your machine. This is the same concept that many popular 3D printers use to print. So what we can do is take these stepper motor trays and use one for the back and forth movement of the Y axis, one for the side to side movement of the X axis, and one for the up and down movement of the Z axis. All right, we've got our idea. So now what do we need to get it done? You'll need at least three desktop sized disk drives, something to control the motors with, something to send the code to the motors, a power supply, various screws, nuts, bolts, mounts, and anything else that you can scavenge from an old desktop. Then you'll also need some basic tools to put everything together. But you can find a full list of parts and tools at the project page below. All right, let's dig in and start breaking down some disk drives. Start by manually ejecting the drive and popping the front off of it. Then you can unscrew the bottom and pry that off as well. Hold on to the casing though because we could probably use it later in the project. Now we can see the good stuff. Disconnect all the ribbons and cables to separate the motors from the main board and then from here you can salvage whatever you want for other projects. But what we're aiming for is this metal tray and the stepper motor. Now housed inside this little carriage is the laser that's used to read the disc. If you want to get that out, it would be great to use for other projects, but regardless if you can or not, try to clear as much stuff out of the carriage as possible. Do this for all three disc drives, and then when you're done, you want to solder new wires to the stepper motor to make them longer. I prefer different colored wires just to help me keep track of what's going where. This isn't necessarily required, but I added some motherboard mounting screws to each of the trays so that I could easily mount different things onto it. But you can use whatever creative solution works best for you. For the trays that I intend to use for the X and Y axis, I mounted an electrical box plate to give it a large flat surface. Now what you want to do is take one of the motor trays and mount it parallel to one of the drive casings close to the edge, kind of like this. This will be the Y axis. Be careful to make sure it's aligned as straight as possible. I used a drill, some motherboard mounts, screws, and washers to mount the tray to the casing. Now take another motor mount and mount it perpendicular to another drive casing, again making it as close to the edge and as straight as possible. This will be the x-axis. For the z-axis, you're going to want to mount it to the electrical plate on the x-axis. Then take the entire assembly and attach it perpendicularly to the Y axis like this. You want to make sure each axis matches up so that it doesn't crash into another platform or overshoot any other platform. When you have it all perfectly aligned, I just use some small L braces and some screws to securely attach it. You want to run all the motor wires to the back of the device in preparation for wiring it all up but we'll cover that in my next video. To keep up with this project, please keep checking the project page at this link. What idea would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Special thanks to Patreon contributor Jay Madwadi for helping make this show possible. If you'd like to get a shout out, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com tinkernut where you can support me by liking, subscribing, commenting, following, or donating. Click here to watch my last video, and for more, go to tinkernut.com.